We've had a fiery week in Starbase. Booster 9 was placed on the OLM, Spin Primes and Static fired. We also saw the fate of the mid bay and much more. Stay tuned for this Starbase update. Of course, we will get around to focusing on all things Booster 9, but before we do that, we need to go through all of the other things that happened this week, starting with the production site. Over at the production site, it's been a week of farewells to two long-standing members of the Starship construction process. The first to go was the tent near the mid-bay. It met its fate in favour of the Star Factory expansion. The bad news? It's gone. The good news, our cameras now get a good view into the high bay for a few weeks until Star Factory takes that place instead. As you might have noticed from the lack of cladding at the bottom, the aforementioned mid bay was the second structure to go. Following several hours of careful manipulation from some construction equipment, the bay finally collapsed into an empty ring yard. We also saw a mystery box roll into the Starlink building. It may contain some Starlink hardware or even Starship sized Starlink V2 satellites. You can also see it here inside of the building. The question still remains though, what is actually inside? As SpaceX has yet to open it while we have a camera on it. There's a chance that the Starlink building might not be for Starlinks anymore and has been repurposed as a storage building. Upcoming Starships are also being prepared. This is Ship 28, probably the next ship to fly after Ship 25, more on IFT2 at the end of the video. It's been receiving its vacuum Raptor engines. In this close-up, you can see one of the three Engine 225. Next for Ship 28, it'll be static-fired, probably after the launch of the current stack and readied for its own launch attempt. You can see very clearly in this shot that the new powerhead of Raptor 2 is much slimmer compared to the early Raptor Christmas trees. It is impressive how drastically SpaceX developed the engine over time. Speaking of boxes, more shipping boxes have arrived. Sadly, we don't know what's in them as we can't look through them. However, another box may give us a hint. We saw some of these boxes opened and spotted some labels. These crates are from a company that manufactures steel pressing hardware, so this is likely tooling for the Star Factory expansion, being stored in other buildings, while the Star Factory is, well, being expanded. Workers are installing cladding on the new Mega Bay to make the building fully operational. Of course, it still needs its roof and the necessary bridge cranes, but once that is done, SpaceX has a fancy new high bay to use for ship and booster stacking and temporary storage. At the end of the week, Ship 30 moved around in the high bay. It moved to the right side for ship preparation after leaving the stacking area on the left side of the high bay. Heading down Highway 4 over at the OAM, SpaceX once again tested the Booster Quick Disconnect hood. This part will retract at launch to protect the sensitive fueling hardware from the Booster's 33 Raptor engines. Also, the aerial work platform you can see here in front of the OAM was present all week as it had a technical problem and broke down before the spin prime test. But don't worry, it was repaired and removed before the static fire. We'll take a look at that in a second, but first, let's focus on the upcoming flights and the new vehicles that are needed, starting with Ship 25. Ship 25 has had its crane attachment points entirely removed. This is normal, as thermal protection system tiles need to cover these areas. This is because every part of the belly of the ship needs to be protected during re-entry, and since only one more device will lift Ship 25, the chopsticks, it is no longer required to have crane lifting points. The final work is to fill these gaps and cover the rest of the belly with TPS tiles for launch. Let's move our attention to Booster 9. The booster slated to fly the next integrated flight test was moving around in the Mega Bay. You can see its shiny new crown, the hot staging ring attached to the booster's top. After an initial peak, the booster then moved back again. Remember though that this was all going on whilst Tropical Storm Harold passed over Starbase, which probably made the movement operations much more difficult. Another reshuffle of the position was performed twice, so either SpaceX needed it in a different position or they were hoping for other rollout times but decided not to move forward. In the early morning, Booster 9 rolled out to the ring yard in preparation for the journey to the launch site. It was placed on top of a group of self-propelled modular transporter modules heavily supported by counterweights on the bottom. This lowers the center of mass towards the ground to make the transit more stable. It then took the journey down Highway 4 to the launch site without any brakes or issues. 
During that rollout, the chopsticks already went into their lifting position. SpaceX wanted to waste no time with this one. Booster 9 was then rolled between the chopsticks to get ready for the grab and subsequent lift. The chopsticks closed and were prepared for lifting by the holding pins just below the chopsticks. SpaceX then went for a record lifting time. Once the booster was past the initial lift out of the transport stand, the chopsticks picked up the pace and the booster was rotated over and gently placed on the OLM. This is where the PAT stabilizers are attached to help guide the booster for the last few centimeters before contact with the OLM. SpaceX removed the Raptor dance floor from below the OLM in preparation for a spin prime and static fire test. Of course, it makes sense to not fire your Raptor engines against it. And with that, the pad was ready for Raptor action. Before the spin prime test, the booster grid fins were tested. They sometimes do this during road closures. They use the time to perform other tests while the tank farm is still preparing. Another thing that was performed was a test of the FireX system. This system is crucial for spin prime tests as it was initially installed because of Booster 7's infamous overpressure event. Booster 9 then chilled, fueled and got ready for the spin prime test, which was then performed in the evening hours of the day. After that, the vehicle was successfully detanked. And then it was time for the big test. Booster 9's static fire day started just on time. SpaceX had the pad cleared even before the road closure. Once the pad closure was in place, SpaceX started preconditioning the orbital tank farm. And I won't keep you waiting. Here is the full test of Booster 9 once it was fueled and ready. SpaceX has confirmed that the test was with 33 engines, with all but two of them firing for the entire test duration. Elon confirmed this was a successful test, which means that from here, the next step for this booster will be stacking and the final preparation for launch. Speaking of 33 engines, we have a shirt about firing 33 engines. The link is in the description. In this comparison between the first and second static fire and Booster 7's big static fire, you can see the difference in duration between all three. Also, compared to B9's first fire, the smoke and dust seem much more significant. This might come down to the longer duration or the higher power. You can also see how the new engine section purge vents are firing before it hides behind the smoke. This system will most likely be used to purge the area at the engine section to prevent another fire in that area during flight. Another mitigation to make Flight 2 more successful. After this test, the booster was detanked and saved, and the chopsticks were positioned to prepare for the lift of Ship 25 in the coming days. We should also mention that current marine documentation indicates that the launch is now net never earlier than September 8th. Of course, that might slip a bit more, but we are probably just weeks away from the launch of Starship 25 atop Booster 9. Let us know what you think down in the comments. Is this date more realistic than the original August 31st? Thanks for watching, and goodbye.